but um, yeah. Oh, damn it. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll cut off. Hey everyone, welcome to Sunny Commutes, a podcast where I combine the worlds of web development and business and share my experiences. It's podcast episode 74, where I'll be interviewing uh, Eric and Rasmussen. Rasmussen? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, you probably know him from uh, an open, an open source world, in the React world, uh, with Redux form, uh, Final form, React Final form and probably a couple other libraries as well. So um, yeah, anything else that they should probably know about you and what you do? Uh, no, I um, open source is really just a hobby of mine, uh, but I have a lot of fun doing it. I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of producing code that other people, that solves other people's problems. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just fun for me. Yeah, and I think the amazing part is actually, I used Redux Form a long time ago, worked at a startup for nine months about uh, two or three years ago mm-hmm. and so it's amazing like you know people get to through open source meet together in person and yeah just, we saw each other on twitter and, yeah, exactly. and <laughs> i happen to be stopping by near where you are and Very cool. uh, here we are uh, so how'd you how'd you get into open source was it just it was i guess i did a couple of little uh utilities that i don't know for some reason i just to learn about how to publish stuff in, in GitHub and, yeah. and NPM that I published that not a lot of people found value from. But then uh, when Redux was just taking off, I was I was active in the React Deflux uh, Slack group. Yeah. Uh, originally it was on Slack, but then they grew until It's Slack. still very active, yeah. Yeah, but I was I was there sort of rubbing chat elbows with, uh, with, with Dan Abramoff and Andrew, and mm-hmm. when they were discussing... Redux because at that point Facebook had come out with this uh, here's this Flux architecture that totally handles all the unidirectional data flow of React uh, but all we're going to give you is this diagram and you guys go write your own code yeah, have fun. Uh, <laughs> and and everybody and their brother I, I wrote my own as well implementation of that you know with you know with different stores here store there and passing your dispatching your your um, actions your actions so, through yeah. it and it, so I I was sort of watching as Redux was developing and it was it was fascinating I remember back before they came up with an reducer they called them stores because that's what uh, that's right. what the the spec said and anyway uh, when Redux started be- to become popular I it immediately clicked with me that wow this is the way to do this flux architecture and at the time, I was working on a side project that needed a big long form, like the kind of thing to like fill in like your LinkedIn profile. Right, something. like a huge wizard, right? Well, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it wasn't even a wizard. It was just so like one page. Yeah, it was if you're. Um, I guess there were separate pages, but it was as if you were filling out your 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 resume, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, which is a thousand fields, right? And so I was like, well, how do I store this? How do how do I keep track of all this form data? And Redux was, you know, the new hotness. And yeah. I said, uh, I, I asked Dan, I said, um, I'd like to store my, my form data in Redux because that's what it seems like you should, where you should store all your data. Yeah. Uh, there was a big uh, debate around it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, no, yeah, there, is, there has been since and, and even at the time. Yeah. Uh, but I said, I can't actually dispatch an action and change the form state on every single key press, right? That's too many <laughs> actions, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? And he said, I don't know, go try it. And it was, uh, and so I said, okay. And so I did, and I came up with this little library, the simple reducer that kept track of your form data. And I open sourced it and immediately... Was this was called Redux Form Redux at form. the time? Yeah, first, yeah that's, that's what I, you know, <laughs> the obvious name for yeah, it. Yeah, it's generic uh, enough. And a, a bunch of people jumped on it because everyone wanted to do stuff with, with Redux. And also... Turned out web developers have a lot of need for forms. Yeah. And I started getting all these pull requests and, and just suggestions and why does it do this and can it do this and can it handle this? Yeah. And it just sort of grew and uh, I sort of stuck with it and kept. So, from those first kind of, I mean, everyone throws up like small utilities and stuff on GitHub. Right? Yeah, and it started out as a small yeah. utility, but then it became. But it wasn't so gradual, popular. it was just like Redux Form was the big one? Uh, Redux Form, uh, well, okay. Before that, I had a um, 
because this was the time when Dan again had come yeah. out with this uh, with this hot reloader thing mm -hmm. that you know you could immediately see your changes, yeah. which was amazing. And, and you met Dan in, in person? I have or? not. I oh, have not. Okay. Uh, hope to meet you soon. Maybe at a conference or something. Hopefully. Yeah. And also, it, we were you know, we were doing this server side rendering universal app yeah. uh, possibility, and so I sort of cobbled together, and Webpack uh, had just become a, a big thing, and so I sort of cobbled together this way of building a website that had Webpack with server side rendering and hot reloading and Redux, and uh, and that sort of became popular because there weren't any boilerplate. Like, okay. uh, Frameworks like that, yeah, uh, and that thing still has it, people still star it to this day. Redux form help got helped a little bit by that because I I was like, oh well, why don't I just show in this demo app how you do forms in Redux? Yeah, and so a lot of people got started doing started with Redux because they saw it there. Yeah, Redux form. Uh, but yeah, those were my first real okay. forays into open source. Any any issues you've come across? Not 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 open source issues, right. but. Yeah. Uh, in terms of just requesting features but not doing pull requests or kind of the attitude sometimes because I see this quite often sometimes in the open source community yeah 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 uh, a lot of times people will say hey why doesn't why doesn't do this yeah and sometimes I uh, back when I had time to to field all, all of these I would uh, I'd say you know that's a good idea and a lot of them I implement I went ahead and implemented mm -hmm. um, because if I thought it was a good idea um, to be honest I have you a, kind of brush off any negative I have not comments received a lot like of that. negative comments. Okay, that's good. There have been one or two people that have come on to my to an issue on one of my libraries and and that someone said, Hey, why doesn't it do this? And came and said, Oh, this Eric Rask guy is uh, <laughs> is so pretentious he's gonna say no because he thinks he's right about everything. Yeah. Uh, very, very few of those. Okay. <laughs> so many people come it's probably uh, because you're a pretty nice person, even online. So. Well, I, I guess, but I mean, the majority of, of my of my issues and stuff start with, "Oh my God, thank you for your library. This is amazing. Yeah. You know, this has helped me so much. It saved me so much time. What if it just did this?" Yeah. And they start with that with that attitude. And from what I've seen, a lot of people really. I haven't had a lot of uh, entitled people coming and say. Uh, you you owe me this you know this this bug fix <laughs> right, right, um, right. I, like providing I, this free like software helps their well, their project yeah, exactly right? and you know at this point Redux Forum has millions of uh, over a million monthly downloads and is being used by corporations far and wide yeah. and and I don't know it seems um, I haven't had a lot of trouble with the open source community as far as that as yeah, that's good, good. Yeah, okay. I think that's good advice though for anyone that's trying to contribute or trying to be a part of open source. Yes, too. if you want going, uh, there's a. I almost, I almost wrote a wrote a blog post one time about. Um, it was going to be called like, um, upping your open source game or something. Where there's these different there's these different you can think of it like uh, steps on a staircase. So, the first thing you can do is you know complain on Twitter that that this <laughs> yeah. that this library sucks because it doesn't do what you want. And then the next thing is, uh, you know, f filing an issue. Uh, and the next thing is filing a politely worded issue that mm -hmm. you can do. And then even better is if you can actually go and look into the code and, you know, suggest in your issue, hey, this is, I think this is the line that's, that's causing the problem. Yeah. And then even better is if you can create a sandbox, you know, when Redux Forum was, was getting yeah, popular, it, yeah. we, we didn't really have a code sandbox, which is a blessing for uh, yeah. open source uh, library authors. Um, and then if you can go in and actually submit a PR and say, look, I found this, I've, I ran into this problem, this is, this is why I think it should work this way, mm -hmm. here's a PR that makes it work that way, uh, and even better is if you can include tests, so you, uh, to actually test yeah. that what, a test that would fail without that PR and the one that that succeeds with it. That's the the best thing because as a library author, I get stuff like that and I'm just like, yeah, that makes sense. Merge. Yeah. Uh, and makes, it makes your me, life much It costs easier. me no yeah. time at all. Uh, I go, uh, you know, I go maybe once a week. I go and I I look through all the PRs if I'm yeah. if I'm busy with other things. Yeah. And and some are like uh, yes, yes, or no. And if I say no, then I explain why or. Or, you know, this is a good idea, but you've 
and this is a good attempt, but you've gone about it slightly the wrong way. And sometimes I'll go and I'll and I'll I'll fix either their PR or implement it in a better way and sort of give them credit. But okay, um, that's a pretty good way to go about it. Yeah. yeah. So far, I've been pretty lucky, I think. Okay. Now, with Iron Mike, uh, we're actually using, like, I guess the newer version of Redux Form, or kind of the, I don't know, continuation of it, uh -huh. just Final Form and React Final Form, right? Right. Hey, what was your, I guess, your motivation for moving away and kind of creating an entirely new library? Right. Well, with Redux Form, uh, you know, I got all this feedback, and a lot of the, a lot of the feedback was valid concerns that, yes, this is a real problem. Uh, but there wasn't a way to implement it. Wouldn't it be nice if, if it I was... I guess let me ask, did you want to decouple away from Redux as one of the things? And two, was, was there performance was the issue there, as well? Uh, yeah, performance... In of the global store Performance was, was sort of an issue, not as much as, as people like to... They like, like blew to it out Redux. of proportion, yeah. Um, but, you know, some people said... Uh, Hey, people are using Redux with with Angular and other and other frameworks. Uh, isn't Redux Form just a reducer? Why yeah. can't we? Why can't Redux Form work with other frameworks? And other people said, um, uh, you know, it'd be great if we could use render functions, but the way it's built with the with it's so tightly coupled with uh, with React Redux mm -hmm. and the higher order components. The render functions weren't really possible, and also, you know, why is this bundle size so freaking huge? Because it's, you know, why, why if I'm building a little form, do I need all of this code to manage arrays of fields and all this complex yeah. stuff? That the most complex use cases, why is that all in the one bundle? And anyway, so I, those were all valid criticisms, and yeah. I went and I thought about it all, and um, and I. Well, they started off as I love Redux form, right? Right, of course, of course. <laughs> but these are things but, that but could wouldn't, be wouldn't it be nice yeah. if? Yeah. And you know what? I got a, I got most of this feedback, most of the negative feedback. Again, I'm uh, just lucky on, on on GitHub. I got most of it from when I actually started to go to conferences, and people would pull me aside and okay. be like, "Hey, I love your I love your thing, but what about this?" Um, anyway, so I let that sort of simmer around for a while, and and then it occurred to me, well. The, the whole modeling of your form state, your, you know, which field is active, uh, validation, which fields are invalid, which fields are dirty, all that stuff, that could just be in its own little self-contained, uh, just pure JavaScript library yeah. that could be used by anybody. And then, with that all in self-contained, it'd be really easy to just write a little wrapper around it for React. Yeah. They would just hook into that. And so that's where React uh, final form and final yeah. form uh, were were born, and so I coded that up and it it worked. Well, how'd you come up with the name? Is that like a reference? Or <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Uh, all I, I imagine like this is not even my final form. Like in yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, all of the words that use the word form in the dictionary were taken on M on npm. Okay, uh, as always. Yeah. Yeah, like. Forvetable Labs is a is a is a popular open source popular open source uh, company, yeah. and you know, formidable is a great word that uses the word form, taken. Okay. Uh, and all I I looked at a bunch of stuff. It was not my yeah. uh, my my choice, but then I I said, oh look, Final Form is available, and it has a little bit of that that haughty. Um, oh, you won't need any more form like yeah, that. you, last you one, come yeah, here. Final one, uh, yeah. You know, I've written one, but this is the this is the final one. Yeah. Um, which is just sort of tongue in cheek, um, because for sure it will be succeeded, succeeded yeah. by something, uh, and it, it was just available in the namespace. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um. And the and it turned out to that rewriting it. Ah, the other thing that I it was one of the goals uh, was to make it modular, so that you could add on bits and pieces like Lego blocks to build the form library that you needed depending on your requirements. Yeah. So it didn't have to be uh, you didn't have to have all the stuff to do arrays in your in your thing if you were just using it for right. a flat login form or a setting screen or something like that. Uh, so that was uh, a requirement. Yeah. Like I said, so I use it on Iron Mike and 
I guess the initial bundle is very small, mm -hmm. but then eventually I'm like, okay, I need to, like, for a different number of hosts that a podcast would need, right? Right. So that would be an array of uh, a group of fields, right? right? Mm -hmm. So then I pull in, I guess, uh, uh, final form array fields right. or something like that. Yep. Um, and then mutators, I think, is yep, yep. another package. And so that way I can, you know, only bring in what I need and it does all the code splitting and everything. So I, I like the way it's... One, it's much simpler, exactly, I think, for code splitting. but then, yeah, it, it, I'm not pulling in stuff that I don't need, right? Right, exactly. Um, so that was, that, was, that was a big thing. And the other nice thing was because I had this experience maintaining this wildly popular form library, I, I knew all the use cases. Everyone had come to me with, because when you open source something, you think, oh, this solves this problem very neatly. Yeah. And immediately someone comes and says, this is great, but I sometimes have this value that's negative, and uh, it breaks your thing. So can we handle that too? Yeah. And so I have heard. Occasionally, I will still hear a new edge case for for form uh, UI, yeah. but I've heard so so many examples. So I was able to, you know, have the all of those meeting all of those requirements in mind from the beginning. And go because as every well, it helps having already another library to build, having right. dealt with all of that. Right, the and as every developer will tell you, you build your minimal viable product, and then you get requirement, 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 yeah. and build, 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 and finally your thing is just a grotesquery of, of uh, you know, added tacked on use cases. Yeah. And it's always so cathartic for developers, which uh, to you know scrap it all and build it yeah. fresh, knowing where you're going. And that's sort of what I had the opportunity to do here. But because I knew all these use cases, I was able to systematically go and make sure that it met all of those. Um, and so mm -hmm. I built out this library of examples where I knew that sometimes people wanted to have, for example, a thing that would never have occurred to me, but sometimes you want to have a thing that's like an error, but it doesn't halt submission. It's a warning, it's a suggestion. Yeah. And so that was a thing that someone someone had submitted a PR to add into Redux form. So Redux form handles that, mm -hmm. but it's this whole other branch of the reducer that most people don't need, and it's got all that extra code. Right. And so I was able to um, imagine how to make it more flexible to enable that um, from the from the beginning. But it's been a fun uh, fun journey. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So besides that, um, is there anything else that you want to? mention regarding open source or just the community and development community and stuff like that? Uh, I don't know. The community, like I said, has been pretty good to me. Um, it's it's fun to follow uh, follow people on Twitter that are you know, producing things and yeah. making interesting contributions and, and, and ideas. Uh, one one thing that is easy to happen, that's easy to have happen, is um, uh, on Twitter, if you follow enough people, eventually it'll feel like twice a week there's someone that is announcing this new project that they've come out with <laughs> that solves this big thing. Yeah. And, and, and you're just sitting there like, wow, what have I done this week? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't built this beautiful new thing that handles this, 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 this yeah. wide use cases. Uh, uh, you know, elegantly, yeah. and but what you don't realize is it's different people all the time. They've been working for a yeah. year or nine months or a year and a half or two years on that thing. I mean, like in terms of like imposter <coughs> syndrome or like not feeling they're doing enough. There, there's a little bit of imposter syndrome, but it also feels like like it, 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 you need to realize that it's not the same people that are that are releasing things all the time, and yeah. that they've it's taken them two years. So if it takes you two years to build something and then you release it, that's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah and it's not like you're not doing you know you got to work incrementally on your yeah. project and build it up build it up and if it feels like oh someone else released something someone else released something yeah. someone else released something you can feel like well I'm never going to get there uh, <laughs> why why even do this so yeah. there's a there's a little bit of that that you need to take into yeah. consideration the, the law I'm kind of seeing that like on my side like different episodes and stuff like I'm releasing content just about every week every couple of days right but it's not like from the outside, it seems like I'm doing a, a lot of stuff, but uh, in actuality, it's kind of like it's it's all this work that I put up ahead of time already, right? Right. And then you get into the routine mm -hmm. of it, the schedule, um, and then like you know, I mentioned uh, offline, but like content and code, I think is two very different things. 
and seeing someone release something that's content articles. Not to say it's less work, just a different type of work, right? For sure. When you're sure. working on code kind of typically and seldom, it's very hard to kind of show off that progress more more frequently, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And people yeah, it's it takes a couple hours to write a decent blog post. Yeah. Or, or a newsletter or uh, But then once you're done kinda of like here you go, right? Right. <laughs> when you fix an issue it's not always like this big vocal thing, right? Right, yeah. And you know, whenever I uh, you know, every couple weeks or a couple months where when uh, when there's a new version of, uh, of my library's released, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll tweet about it, and and sometimes it'll get more or less traction on, on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, coding takes coding takes time, and mm -hmm. you got to put in the. Uh, I don't know. I've almost. I I really like writing library code. I like I like having developers as my consumers. That's a lot easier than having Understand actual. Understand what you mean. Yeah. You, you, uh, worse is actual users. Then it's you know management that yeah. that has uh, bizarro requirements. Well, just like customer support, right? And I mean, customer support. And like I said before, developers uh, have an understanding of what it is you're providing for them, and they are so grateful when you can come and fix a thing that because you know they could work on it for uh, for you know ten hours. Or the person that's more familiar with the code could work on it for 30 minutes or an hour and, yeah. and, and fix it. And uh, being a library author, author is, I don't know, it's more rewarding. Uh, users never say, oh, oh, thank you, that, that button is so much more <laughs> legible now. Because yeah. you don't get that sort of feedback. Yeah. But, um, and, you know, your, your management doesn't doesn't do that either they're just like yeah. okay good you did that now you were behind on the next yeah. thing uh, so that's that, that's been fun yeah well, I'll definitely say uh, final form has been really great um, definitely love so especially in one final thing <laughs> uh, so hooks I know hooks is in react final form now yes. and I just want to get like kind of a quick uh, quick hot take on what do you think about react hooks hooks are like like what all the React thought leaders are saying. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I saw um, Michael Jackson gave a gave a talk recently. On a side note, I love how you can say Michael Jackson <laughs> in the React community, yeah. and no one thinks you're talking about you know the, the singer, a, yeah. a, a, a pop star. Um, I was very confused at first, though. Like, yeah, Michael right? Jackson. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he just he just had a talk where he where he talked about how he goes to some his, some of his training things and. People are about 50-50 on, maybe I'll adopt hooks, or uh, maybe, maybe we'll just keep going with what we know. Uh, and his point is, look, uh, hooks is the future. You don't necessarily have to migrate all your, all your stuff, but don't build anything new that isn't using hooks. Right. Uh, because you'll, you will regret yeah. it. Uh, but hooks is, is amazing. So the, what React Final Form is, is it's this wrapper around the inner engine that is Final Form. So when you when the component mounts, it creates this instance of the of the final form engine, and subscribe it registers to subscribe to updates about the form state. Yeah. And each of your fields, and then puts a puts that uh, React final puts that final form instance into the context, and all your fields inside your form uh, pull that out of the context and register themselves. Say, hey, I'm a field. Yeah. This is my name, and these are the things that I want to be notified about. With with the components, it's quite difficult because you um, you had to do it on on uh, on component on component will mount, methods, yeah. and then on component did update. You need to see if you need to change your sub your subscription to stuff, and then on unmount you had to go and, and unsubscribe. You had to hold on in your you know this dot unsubscribe or whatever and call that on unmount. And with hooks, it was just a uh, a thing of beauty because first of all, Final Form um, uses the um, the observer pattern where you, when you call subscribe, mm -hmm. it's and you give it your callback on what you that you want to get called uh, information back on. It the subscribe returns the function to call to unsubscribe. Yeah. That's the standard. Uh, you know anyone that uses RxJS or anything knows about that. Uh, but of course, because that's the standard, that's the thing that use effect 
uh, requires. Yeah. Uh, so it was literally just my use effect call was calling that subscribe, and then just made it all. Simpler. It just it just yeah. made it all simpler. And with use effect, it handles your changing of of uh, <coughs> of props. When your props change, it's going to go and unsubscribe and resubscribe, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. And it just all sort of fell into place. It was much more elegant and beautiful and stuff. All right. And and then when I was just about done implementing uh, the React Final Form and the field and, and Form Spy is the other um, the other component and using Cooks, it occurred to me, you know, I one of those things where you wake up in the middle of the night and you're just like, oh yeah. And what occurred to me is I can take all of the 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 body of that render function now that it's just a, a function thing mm -hmm. and pull out all the hook stuff into its own custom hook and then I can I can export that so anyone can build their own field component if they want to uh, okay. any component that you want to build you, and you say use field and you get all of that unsubscribing resubscribing uh, magic just yeah. is, is in there already it makes because, it even modular at this point yeah. right. Um, it's not that useful in practice, though, because the real value of the field component is to, for, for both the form and the field components, is to inject states into your JSX. Mm -hmm. And the only way to inject state into your JSX is with render props. Okay. There, there's not a... Um, if, you want, if you want a component that does something and gives you some state, you really have to use a render prop. Yeah. So using a hook, you can't... If you like, you can't put your form uh, JSX stuff and then outside use a call a use field because you're you're not inside the context that's inside that those two form tags. Mm -hmm. um, but it does allow like you you can do some interesting things with it. You can build your own custom error component that you used to be able to do composing uh, field com components together, but uh, now you can do it quickly with, Sweet, with, yeah. with use field. So. So thumbs up for, for hooks is I love the, hooks. The, the hooks. final, yeah. Yeah, and and if you notice, anyone that you respect in the React community yeah. is is all yes hooks is the way yeah. it, it should have been forever. Um, yeah, I thought they added magic, but lifecycle methods already add some magic, so it really declaratively my provides initial, a lot of My initial reaction was that feels that feels too magical, um, and I think I I, I think. During their React rally, where they announced that, I, I think I tweeted something about yeah. that, and I think I think uh, Sophie came back at, at me and said, well, "It's not actually. Uh, it's really. Yeah. It's really not." <laughs> it's like, "Oh, geez, I just that's cool." Yeah. So one one final thing I, I wanted to say is um, to really understand hooks, I cannot ha I cannot recommend highly enough um, Sean Wang's talk in uh, I don't know. It was in it was in Asia somewhere. I forget uh, where he. He went and built hooks from the ground up. Um, he, he built React hooks in a in a way mm -hmm. um, to help you understand how, how yeah, it works. You'll definitely look that up and include it in show notes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, because he built he built more or less uh, React hooks in, and if you minify it, it actually fits in a tweet. Really? <laughs> he, he realized that the night before his talk and 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 said, "Wow, this is under this is under 240 characters." That's of, crazy. Uh, 280, 80 character yeah. um, and that really helps you understand hooks because hooks feels like magic because yeah. it's you say use use states and then somehow the value that you get back is different every time mm -hmm. how that that feels like it what re-render from somewhere right yeah. re-render from somewhere uh, but then when you uh, his talk really explains it very well okay. it's yeah. um it's very enlightening for anyone like that, that. that is like that is scared of hooks uh, that should help. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, awesome knowledge about uh, Redux form, React final form, and just kind of hooks and open source community. So I think there's a lot of awesome stuff uh, yeah. said here. Uh, anything you want to shout out besides, you know, your, your GitHub probably or Twitter? Uh, yeah, on Twitter. Which I'll I'm, link everything. Yeah, on Twitter, I'm Eric Rass, same on GitHub, E R I K R A S. Uh, if you like, non-tech podcasts I've got two I've got two podcasts oh, that's uh, right yeah. one is at uh, seekjustice.fm 
and that's talking about uh, the criminal justice system. I've got this friend that is an expert in that, and I don't know anything, so I'm sort of learning about it from him, uh, which is good. You know, so from an audience perspective, you can learn with me. And another one is with the same guy, but it's just us being silly. It's called happyhour.fm, and uh, check that out. Might Try to be, compete with the other happy hour podcasts. You know, what I'm talking about the. Th- there are there are uh, if you look um, if you look through the podcast directory, there are about thirty podcasts with another okay. happy hour in it, but most of them are dead uh, because it turns out podcasts are really easy to start. Yeah, but continuing and is a lot very harder difficult. to continue. Yeah. So at the moment, we have not yet uh, ceased operations. So okay. check that out if you're interested in. Um, you know, relieving some tension yeah. on Friday after work. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for talking to me, Eric. Yes, this yeah. has very, been very interesting. Hopefully thank we'll you. meet up uh, in the future. So, yeah. yeah, this would be All cool. Right. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.